We're out here in a sea of cars, SEMA 2013. Unbelievable machines out here. And we've got John Wargo from the Custom Shop and another one of his awesome creations. Man, this is outstanding, dude. Thank you very much. Uh, beautiful color choice. And, and uh, we're around cars that took years to build. And this one looks, it's on par with all of them. Tell me about the time frame for this car. How long did it take you? Well, we built this car in about three and a half months. Um, you know, and it's floor pans, quarter panels, doors, fenders, hood. Um, Pretty much everything that we could get good mark sheet metal wise, we had to put on. You know, back in Illinois, yeah, we got rust, man. And you know, when you want to build a nice car, you got to get rid of the rust. Yeah, well, let's face it, the '60s cars, well, they're 40 plus years old now, right? Yeah, so you're gonna showing their age. Them. Absolutely. But the details on this thing, not only is your body work really nice, but the details just keep coming. Talk to me about some of the accent stripes and the the pearls that you used. Well, you know, one of the things that I guess I'm probably most known for in my shop is kind of my crazy creation of colors and combinations and stuff and um, you know the detail on this one I wanted a nice pop in color so this is actually pro spray it's called speed red yeah um, and then the silvers um, I faded uh, a light silver to a to actually to a black and then I came back over that with a spectra flare metallic and then I ghosted in with a pearl, a little tiny Chevy bow ties over top of it. Mm -hmm. So depending on how the light hits, sometimes you see the bow ties and sometimes you Yeah, don't. they flop. It's yeah, incredible. It's really neat. It's, that's neat stuff, man. And that's, I don't, do you do your own airbrushing? I know I, you do your paint. I do everything. Yeah, everything. A Renaissance man. He does it all. <laughs> it's very cool. Thank well, you. let's talk about some of the Eastwood equipment that you used on it. You used some welding gear, yes? Yep, yep, definitely. We got the new welder from them. Um, you know, obviously because you're putting quarter panels on, floor pans in. Yep. You know, it's a lot of cutting, a lot of fabricating and stuff. And you know, when you get behind the quarter panel, you see all the nastiness behind absolutely, it. You absolutely. You know, well, you got to put something on there. Yep. So you know, we, we clean it up as best we can, but you know, a lot of the you know rust encapsulators and stuff like that really. I mean, it's the only way you can get in there and fix that. Yeah. Without just hiding it behind a quarter panel. Exactly. You know, a lot of guys, you know, and, and I don't want to be mean, but a lot of guys will just throw a quarter panel on and oh, that's good. Get it well, done, cave it, yeah, cave it, whatever. You know, I mean, and, and you know, and now they think, well, it, it's it's perfect. You know, yeah. well, you can't leave all that rust behind there. So that's where you know when you get the quarter off, that's mm -hmm. when you clean all that junk up. Yeah. And then of course, you know, putting the quarter panel on, you know, we. You know, a lot of guys TIG weld, we MIG weld. I mean, that's just how yep. we do it. Um, yep. You know, I'm more comfortable with a MIG. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, for us, we weld it all on there, yep. grind them all down, and, you know, make it look pretty. Yeah. So after the welding's all done, your primer surfaces stuff, you've also got the thermoacoustic stuff in here. This yep. thing is really loud, right? And he's going to start it up for us. It's really <laughs> loud, and it sounds like a pro mod or something. It, it, so we, you... We've got electronic cutouts, so it kind of <laughs> kind of cheating a little bit. But uh, too cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, at the same time, you know, people expect that new car quiet sound you yeah. know and you know yeah. so it is nice to be able to put that kind of stuff down to help dampen the sound of the exhaust plus keep the heat off your feet yeah. you know we put a vintage air system in here so we want to be able to you know make that vintage air work absolutely the way it's supposed to yeah it's not just for sound it's to keep your environment comfortable that's right now talk to me about the engine uh the engine is a 408 ls3 stroker motor from atk uh we dyno at 630 horse uh through an ls3 uh, it's called a high ram intake manifold with a set of Terminator twin throttle bodies on it. Mm -hmm. um, it was something we kind of tweaked around with Holly. They were like, I don't know about that. And, <laughs> but I'm like, you know, it, it, it'd be cool to do, you know. Yeah. I wanted the old school motor through the hood look. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yet I still wanted the creature comforts of the fuel injection. Very nice, man. Very nice work. Well, what else about the details of the car can you share with us? Um, you know, one of the things that we like to do is get them to sit low, you know, so, yeah. you know, we use Firestone airbags mm -hmm. and, you know, upgrade the control arms. We did uh, MBM control arms on it and disc brakes. Uh, we did a Hydra Boost brake yeah. system on it, you know, because, you know, obviously you got that much horsepower, you got to stop it. You got to you know? stop and you got to steer. And that's right. Uh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. You know, so. um, we did a rack and pinion upgrade from Flaming River. Mm -hmm. So it's got a really nice controlled steering on it now. I mean, a lot of little things like that, that, yeah. you know, until you really drive a car, you don't know how much better those things are. Absolutely. Um, Speaking of driving it, the interior, man, the seats. Thank what, you. what I like that you did is you kept the back slow. Like the 60s muscle cars, they all had low back seats, but yep. they're heavily bolstered. They're really nicely appointed. Who does your upholstery work? We do everything in house. You got to be kidding no. me. No. Um, I got a, a guy uh, from Dino's Upholstery, he's a local guy that yeah. he'll stitch up my seats and stuff for me. Um, I designed everything and 
Um, he's really good at the stitch work, and we've been working together here for a few years. But basically, stop, top to bottom, this car was built at my shop. So how, what kind of a crew do you have at your shop? How um, many guys? It's myself and three guys, yeah. and then my wife does uh, the paperwork and the book work yeah. and stuff. So what did your wife think about not seeing you for three and a half months? You know, she, <laughs> being that she works with me, it's not yeah. so bad because, you know, she comes in every day. Yeah, you know, sees me while I'm working, and then you know, if she yep. knows if I got to work late that night. That's just how it works, you know. So obviously, you've got the support of your family. How yes. important is that to you? Well, my son's 14, and he's just now really kind of understanding why I do what I do. You know, he's kind of yep. starting to see the passion, and you know, I'm really hoping to bring him in. You know, as he gets a little older here, and teach him the. The, yeah. the trade and, and hopefully he'll, you know, be another generation of the custom shop. I talked to somebody this morning that said they thought the hot rod bug was genetic. So hopefully that's the case and hopefully you, uh, you are bringing up the next generation of that's guys right. that do awesome work like this. John, thanks for sharing with us, man. Very much. John Wargo, the custom shop. Check this awesome car, dude.